Hello and good evening. My name is Bob and this evening I'm going to talk a little bit about Raspberry Pis as music servers and do the final assembly of a new music server I have under construction here in the shop. So in front of us here are the basic components of the music server. This uh, server has a four terabyte hard drive. It's a Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gig of RAM. Probably not necessary, but that's what I've got. And then it's booted off the micro SD card, of course. Then in between is this daughter board. And what the daughter board does is a couple of things. The first thing is, is it mounts the SSD and then gives a USB interface. So it's like an SSD on a USB cable. Then you jumper the uh, this to the Raspberry Pi, and that uh, gives you the complete system. Uh, it goes in a plastic case, which we're going to, a Lexan case, and there is a fan in this case, but I think it's optional, and we're going to see what happens with some temperature testing over time. I've put these extra big heat sinks on the Raspberry Pi, and we'll see. Try and avoid that. It's not a pulse uh, fan, so it, it should be should be fine but we'll see if it makes any noise or whatever. So the first part of the assembly, I think what we'll do is put the SSD on, and I wanna show you something I found as I was doing test assemblies. So um, the SSD mounts on the board, and then there are two studs that hold the SSD to the uh, to the board, and notice there's a gap at this one board, so everything's not completely square, and that's um, a little disconcerting. I was going to drill these out and uh, just run the screws through because they're threaded, which didn't make any sense to me. But we'll go from here and just not worry about it for right now. So what I'm going to do first here is uh, get this. SSD mounted. And the other thing to note is, is these studs are not perfectly straight. I think it's a little manufacturing defect that um, I'm just going to have to deal with for now. Okay, I got it lined up. And so now the SSD is mounted. There are four standoffs that will go onto the case. So let's put those on real quick. Probably should have uh, put these in before the SSD. It's a little harder with the SSD on there. Helps maybe that I turn it over the other way. screw. So SSDs mounted, standoffs are there, the wrong way. No wonder I'm having trouble. That's what happens when you shoot live. You get nervous. You do things backwards. No harm, no foul. Wouldn't work too well trying to get the Raspberry Pi over those standoffs. Put 
too late in the day for caffeine, I think. By the way, this is anti-static plastic here, so I'm doing my best here to keep, uh, keep reasonably safe from causing any electrical damage. Probably ought to be wearing a wrist strap. Okay, and maybe just give them a little extra nudge so they stay tight. Now, here's one of the interesting things about this board. There's no jumpers or wires that go from the Raspberry Pi to the board. The way they do it is with these things called pogo pins. And you can see this little pin here. Get the camera to focus on it. The little pin is spring-loaded, and it pushes down. And the pins line up with the factory test points on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi board. So that gives us the exact alignment we need. And as long as the Raspberry Pi folks manufacture them all the same, then that'll line up. Look at the rest of the hardware here. So, Now, as I kind of mentioned in the post on audiophile style and uh, alluded to in the uh, YouTube, the uh, you're in the middle of this project, okay? So it, it may seem a little bit cold, but I have I think I have good reasons for that. First one was I didn't think of this until about this time, and the second one is um, I'm trying to show how reasonably easy this is to do, and this one is. Uh, this one's a little more complicated because of the extra board. Uh, I'll show you another one in a minute. And a uh, big shout out to Chris Conacher for you know all kinds of ideas about that. So here we go. We've got the Raspberry Pi attached to the daughter board and the SSD attached to the bottom. Notice that the in this case, the slot for the micro SD card is available. These all come out the side, okay? And then this is the jumper block that goes between the daughter board and the um, CPU. And I'm sort of disappointed in this because it's all exposed. Um, another company, which we'll talk about in a second, makes one which is in this lovely little plastic case. So I think that... Uh, I think the folks at uh, uh, Geek Pie, where I got this, probably need a little, eh, up the ante just a little bit. Now, the fan is on this part of the board here, okay? And it connects up with the connector on here, the 5 volt out. So we have the red to plus, and we have the black to minus, and to be perfectly honest, I don't like those. Those are like not very good connections. Yeah, we'll see how they do. So there we go. It's assembled. It's not in the case. I think what I want to do is kind of get it started into the case and see what happens. And then we'll go to the next phase. So the Some folks might not like the look of this kind of open computing style. I happen to think it's pretty cool, so that's why I'm doing it. What I'm going to do first here is quick um, put the side standoffs on. to maybe give me a little bit more support when I'm putting the sides on. We'll see if that works out. The um, instructions for all this are just a little bit lightweight. They're, 
uh, they're mostly in pictures on the Amazon page. So I find that um, uh, fascinating at best. This is one of those builds where you could uh, use one of those fans with RGB lights and do all kinds of crazy stuff, but uh, I don't think it's worth it. So I'll unplug this for the minute till we get that in. So here's the Pi whole thing screws down to that uh, location right there. Now the one thing I do notice is it's really close to these sides and I have the feeling I'm going to have to uh, adapt here a little bit as I'm going on. So this side is the vent side. Okay, and that lines up with the connectors for the Raspberry Pi. Now, one of the things so you want to remember with this is do not plug power into here, okay, for this setup. They, they, they have it open, but they say don't plug power into there. I'm sure there's multiple reasons why, but uh, I think I know a couple because it is being fed from this uh, barrel jack connector. Now, what's nice about the barrel jack connector, it lets you use some more standard as in audiophile land power supplies. So we can pick our favorite um, our favorite linear power supply, which is which might be fun. Um, I don't I don't know how that will work out. It will be an interesting uh, thing to try, and I plan on doing that. But I think what we'll do is we'll start out with something that's not quite so sophisticated. And I'll show you that in a second. But I want to just get the flavor for getting this assembled uh, first. I think they probably laser cut this. I don't know. It looks really nicely done. All right, so now let's see if we can probably pull that out. That probably sticks out too far to make this fit nicely. Yeah, we're going to have to play this game a little bit more. So put the Raspberry Pi in there and then uh, assemble this. Yeah. I think the key to assembly is to leave one uh, post off. Hopefully I won't have to leave two off. Okay, so now you can see that all lines up pretty nicely. And uh, let's go ahead and put this on to kind of hold that side together just because I think it's a good idea. Of course, that only goes on one way. There we go. So now we're kind of halfway together and then this side goes here and supposedly lines up to give us the um, okay lesson is two posts not four. Okay. That's pretty good. 
Now this will be the interesting part, getting the final one in. And uh, that, uh, that seems to have worked out rather perfectly. Now I'm going to screw this one down just to hold things together a little bit better. Okay, those three are on. Let's go ahead and put the fourth post on. Yeah, do this this way. Little bit of a little bit like a worn out Tinker Toy set. They don't quite stay together when you want them to. Okay. Now that's not super tight. So there we are all together. And I'm going to plug the fan in to that connection. Okay. So there we go. It's all in. We'll uh, put the top case on in a minute. I think what I might want to do is make sure it works before we uh, fire this all the way up. So let's talk about power supplies first. Now the same company who manufactures the case also sells this uh, but $13 or $15 uh, switching power supply with the proper connector for getting juice to it. And so what I think we'll do here is uh, plug this in and uh, See about powering this up. Now, Raspberry Pi 4 does have Wi Fi, but since this is my server, I sort of decided not to use Wi Fi. I'm going to use um, Ethernet. And just for the heck of it here, Okay, plug in an HDMI connector, and we're going to go black, and let's see what happens. Well, that's a good start. That's the Raspberry Pi getting started screen, and you can see Pi Core Player booting up. And while it plays with itself doing these weird greps that don't seem to do anything on boot up. I think what we'll do is look at putting the case the rest of the way together. Okay, and of course, a little noisy things. Okay, so it looks like, okay, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it does make a little bit of noise. Um, we'll see. It's going to be here in the, in the basement, so it won't be uh, in the room with the stereo, so that, uh, that shouldn't bother, but uh, what I want to find out in the long run is do we actually need the fan? Do the temperatures uh, rise with those good heat sinks? I'm hoping they don't. And then um, we will uh, see what happens. And one more screw. So now the server 
is completely assembled and it's actually booted up and running okay very nicely so what we can do is try and talk to it real quick to make sure that it's working so there it is PyCore player and sure enough that's happening and bring up Logitech Media Server and yep Logitech Media Server is there too all right so now the server's running let's bring up a player so this USB cable is a little short this is a Pi 4 in the standard Pi 4 display case, the seven inch display case. And it's also running Pi Core Player. And it has uh, USB out to my uh, SMS uh, 200, SMSL AO 200 uh, amplifier over there. And let's boot this up and watch it come up and see what happens. And again, the greps. Now this PyCore player is running this little thing called Jive Light which gives you um, the ability to have this nice display with the touch screen. So we can go to local radio, we'll go FM, and my favorite classical station. Welcome to the WFMC audio stream, co-sponsored by Wintrust. When you choose a Wintrust community bank, your money stays here in the community. With their MagSafe program, you can receive up to $3.75 million in FDIC insured deposits. Find out more at wintrust.com slash I would say that's a success. So there we go. That's one of the servers and one of the streamers working. Um, I wanted to just real quick show, I'm not going to disassemble it now because we're kind of getting long on time here. This is a different case that does some things in a very similar manner. So there's a company called Argon 40, and this is the Argon 1 version 2 case. Now it has on the bottom of it a similar USB to SSD card, but it uses M.2 SATA only, not NVMe, SATA only, uh, drives. It's all encased in this nice little cabinet. There is a fan which is controllable in here. The version 2.1 has an IR receiver in it and they have software for the IR receiver. There is one disadvantage to this M.2 model is there's no way to access the SD card. So you have to take the case apart, four screws, pull this off to do that. The other thing that they've done which is advantageous is full time full size HDMI and it is powered by a uh, <clears throat> USB C connector. So this is my big shout out uh, to Chris Conacher because that in fact is pocketable. So Chris, thanks for the inspiration and I think we'll call it an evening. Let folks uh, get to bed and uh, end the show for now. Catch you soon. Bye-bye.